Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to do introductions via uh, video today. So you guys can do it independently and start working on the computers for your snow essays. So let me go ahead and get started with introductions. So an introduction needs certain things. Um, and on this side, we have what it needs. And on this side, we have what it does not need. So one of the things that we need is a hook. This is an interesting statement um, that kind of introduces us to the idea of what you're talking about. We'll talk more about each of these individual pieces in a minute. You're gonna need some background information you're gonna include the author and title, and then you're gonna end with your thesis. I'm gonna say that again. You're gonna end with your thesis. The thesis is at the end. The end of your introductory paragraph is your thesis. Please don't use it as your hook. It is the end. During this time, you don't need to make any arguments. Uh, you're introducing what you are gonna be arguing. So you don't wanna argue it. You don't need quotes in your introduction. Although you can use a quote for a hook, you do not need to have quotes and you shouldn't be arguing what a quote means. So the hook is an attention grabber. Uh, it could be a relevant quote. It could be an interesting statement about the overall idea, something um, that kind of leads you into the thing. So if you're talking about uh, Russell wanting to grow up or not wanting to grow up, your hook could be a statement about growing up. Um, it shouldn't mention the author or book information yet. Got to hook people in before we talk about that. It should not be a question. You guys are in 10th grade. You're much better writers than that. You don't need that crutch. So we're just not going to use it. Um, and it's not a what if or an imagine if statement. Again, that's a crutch that you guys don't need to use. Um, does it need to be the world's most interesting sentence? No, it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. If you guys could all write the most interesting sentence every single time, that'd be impossible, right? You can't have 30 most interesting sentences ever. But it should be sort of engaging. We'll look at some examples in a minute. The background information is explained relevant information about the, the book or the short story as it may be for this. And the topic that readers need to know. So, Probably you're going to mention the idea that uh, Russell wants to feel cold. You're going to explain if this was uh, like a research thing, you'd explain the side you're on. This is any relevant summary, meaning it's like two to three sentences of like the story snow is about a boy who blah, 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 blah. It should not be a summary of the entire story. This is more true for um, novels, but also like if you're not going to talk about the car, you don't need to spend a ton of time being like, and then they got down on their hands and knees and they crawled out to the car. I don't need a huge, huge summary. A couple sentence summary is great. Again, shouldn't be your arguments, shouldn't be quotes. Uh, then you want to talk about the author and title. You can combine these sentences like In Snow by Charles Baxter. And then you include the author and title. You want to include the author's full name the first time that you refer to them. After that, you refer to them only by last name. So you would say Baxter presents or Baxter encompasses. You would not call him Mr. Baxter, nor would you call him Charles, and I call them by their last name. And then the title of the book, Catalyzed and Punctuated Correctly. We are using a short story. We're gonna go ahead and put those in quotation marks. So snow is gonna be capitalized, the S in snow is gonna be capitalized and you're gonna use quotation marks. Then your thesis, which you guys have already written, which is your overall argument. It comes at the end, the end of your last sentence. Uh, or is at the end, it's your last sentence of your intro paragraph. It's a broad statement about your position. There shouldn't be a list of things you're going to talk about. Again, that's a crutch that maybe we used in junior high that we're not going to do. Please don't use the phrase in this essay. I know it's an essay. 
Um, and your thesis, your last sentence of the intro paragraph shouldn't be off topic because then I'm confused what you're trying to argue. Your thesis should answer the prompt. So the prompt is why does uh, Russell want to feel cold, so cold that the cold itself is permanently interesting. Your thesis should say something like he wants, Russell wants to feel cold because or Russell wanting to feel cold represents blank. Okay. Let's look at some examples. They're color coded the same way they were in the notes. So logic is the basis for man's modern day life. People use logic to run businesses, help their everyday lives. That's our hook. Is it the most interesting thing ever? No, but it introduced the idea that this essay is gonna be about logic. And it's somewhat engaging. And if they were standing on an island, they would use it to survive. Now we're getting into the background knowledge. Lord of the Flies is about surviving on a, uh, being stranded on an island and surviving. In Lord of the Flies by William Golding, there we have our author and title. Piggy's glasses help him to see and navigate the world. They also have a larger symbolic meaning. Oranges are background. Then our thesis, the glasses represent the logic that the boy should use to help them survive on the island. Great. That is a perfectly great introduction for a short essay like we're doing, a six paragraph essay. So that is how you create a introductory paragraph, you should have a hook, background information, name of the author and the story, thesis at the end. Okay, if you have questions, guys, please come and ask. And uh, I will see you soon.